Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Elizabeth Chance podcast with Amanda Borkins. I'm so excited that Amanda's here. But before we get into our conversation, I have to thank our sponsor, Soberlink. Imagine you've just gotten sober. You're working your program, checking in with the recovery coach, maintaining employment, and well, thriving. Now imagine none of your closest friends or family believe you. So much trust is lost during active addiction, and it can be hard to convince loved ones that things are different, that you're different. Soberlink can help. Soberlink's remote alcohol monitoring system is designed to help you sustain a sober lifestyle while while rebuilding trust with loved ones. It's small enough to fit in your purse or your pocket and discreet enough to use in public. Soberlink's devices combine facial recognition, tamper detection, and real-time results. So your friends and family know instantly that you're sober and you're working towards your recovery goals. As a certified recovery specialist myself, I, can re- I can't think of a better tool to maintain accountability, strengthen community, and prove sobriety to loved ones. Make 2023 a memorable one. Visit www.soberlink.com slash BLS and receive a 50, $50 off your first device. Again, thanks so much, Soberlink. So we are here today with one of my closest friends. I love her to death. And um, Amanda, I, I assume we're talking to the people out there, right? So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm just getting used to, you know, working this because she's she has never been on screen Elizabeth. before. She's never been on screen before. No, not on this kind. Not on this not kind. With kind? you? Not with me. <laughs> That's very. But good. she has. Been, how long have you been on HSN? I've been on HSN going on 27, 28 years, something like that. Thirty years or more, because before I was on QVC. <gasps> And how many years were you on QVC? Five. So you've been doing this for over 30 years. Yes. Oh, without a doubt. Yes. But not this. But not this. <laughs> so this is a whole new format yes. for you. Yes. A whole new thing. And mm-hmm. I'm actually, we're in her home. Yes. And I came over because I really wanted you to share your story with us. What, how you got to HSN. Well, let's start in the very beginning. For one, you grew up in New Jersey, Connecticut. Grew up in Connecticut. That's right. Westport, Connecticut. 18 years. 18 years. Mm-hmm. Then you went to New York. Then No, then I went to Europe. I moved oh, to Spain with my family and lived there for three years until I met my husband. I got married. Then I lived in Italy. Then I lived in France. Then I moved, after 15 years, we moved back home, home right. meaning here. And, you, and your kids were all born in Europe? Kids were all born in Italy. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Two in Rome and one in Milan. And how long have you and Francesco been married? We've been married... <laughs> I think it's 58 years this year. 58 mm-hmm. years. Yeah. Okay. And nobody, of marital bliss. Of marital bliss. Marital bliss. Yes. As I've just witnessed five minutes before. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning that my husband and I, we fight all the time, but that's but guess what? what we oh, do. We talk about it. We, yes. I, I came in and he said, he asked me how my husband was. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my God, we're driving each other crazy. I'm packing behind. It's marriage, right? It's not what always. wrong with fighting and venting and having fun and laughing and, it, and making up. That's nice. Making up nice. It is. And you're passionate. Yeah. Very, very. That's why we fight. <laughs> <laughs> i'm not gonna sit back if i have an opinion and maybe i don't agree maybe i do but you know we have to say what we feel and so you raised these three kids I did. here in the united states though uh here in the united states in italy and france but mm-hmm. your oldest skip my oldest skip went to high school in america uh they all did but they also went to school in france at least international which they went for, I guess, maybe four, three years when we were there, which was in Paris. So they speak French and, and Italian and English, oh luckily my. for them. Mm-hmm. You did that. You gave them that gift. Well, not on purpose, but they <laughs> certainly have it. <laughs> I'm glad they have it. It's a wonderful thing to have languages. And I want to ask you a couple of things. When your kids left, how did that feel? When they left? The to go home? to college. When each one left, it was devastating, but they never knew about it. I mean, as soon as that door shut, I collapsed on the floor, (laughs) crying away. But I never wanted them to see me because I didn't want them to feel sorry for me. I wanted them to be happy about going away. And I didn't want them, you know, I didn't want to lay any kind of guilt trip on them, which I didn't think would be fair. But yeah, 
I cried every time. And still today, you said so, you cry. I mean, I one, your daughter times. was just here mm -hmm. from New Her daughter lives the furthest yes. away in New Jersey. Yes. And when she was here and left, you were like, I will cry when she leaves. And I, I, I cry many times, even when the ones I see often, which are the two boys will leave, because it's there's something sad about them leaving, just even if they're just going away for a couple of weeks. You know, because you, as a mother, as a mother, you love your children near and you want to be able to hold them and touch them and kiss them. And, you know, and when they leave, it's you don't have that anymore. So it is sad. You cry, but I get over it. And, you know, I think about my mom who lived to be 101 and she'd come visit me. And every time she left, she'd cry. I'd say wave to her goodbye in the in the car and her eyes would get all uh, can't even talk about it. But I know how she felt because I feel the same way. Lucky you. <laughs> yeah, I know it's terrible. Yeah, it was beautiful but sad. A hundred and one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, amazing woman. I was lucky because I had a mother who was, you know, who had all her senses about her. She couldn't see that well, so she'd use a walker. But she put flowers in it, and she'd say she was walking with a her own garden. But she didn't like using a walker, you know. So. She'd walk as, as as erect as can be because she used to take ballet and she was just a, had this wonderful posture. But she was wonderful and she would come out in the morning when she'd visit and she'd look fabulous and she'd be radiant. And she'd say, well, what can I do to help? I'd say, mom, just sit down and <laughs> let me do things for you. You know, because she'd done things for us her whole life. And how yeah. did she live? To, how, why, how, why do you think she lived to 101? How, what do you attribute that to? She had a philosophy that uh, she felt she had always tried to do the best she could in life for people. She loved the people, that her family especially. She believed family was the most important thing in the world. Your family and your friends and your country. Actually, that was like her family. So she she was surrounded by love. We were brought up in a wonderful, you know, nurturing environment. I was really lucky. Both my parents were were incredible loving parents and and she had the same kind of family and she gave that to me and my sisters and brother as well and i hope i gave that to my children i think i have because we're really close all of us you are we it, really are you really are yes. and you're so blessed yes we are <laughs> you're so blessed on so many levels and when you decided to go on television did, was were you nervous about that? Yeah, I was terrified. I still am very, very nervous. Um, the only skip started without me at QVC. We were selling Perlier, which is Italian Bath and Body, and uh, he said, "Mom, I feel really weird talking about fragrances and sort of feel crazy. I mean, you should be talking about fragrances. I should be talking about research and development." And I said, "Yeah, that's true." He said, "Well, so I think you should come on," and I thought, "Oh my God!" So, I I said, "Okay." I, I, I've always been a very shy person, especially in front of people, even in front of this camera. I'm, I'm nervous, you know, since the get go. It's just not my thing to be out there speaking. And yet here I am for years. It's crazy. But uh, I went on with him and I was so nervous that I took and I don't drink, Elizabeth, you know me, I don't drink. But in, in the hotel, they have that fridge with the little little you know, scotches and whiskeys. And I took a little swig just to relax. And I went on air and I, I swear I had no idea what I said. So I was with Skip, thank God. And when I went home, I didn't even dare look at the tape because I knew I was so awful. I was sure I didn't tell anybody I knew I was going to be on because I didn't want anyone to watch me because I knew I'd be horrible. And finally, after two weeks, I thought I have to watch that show and see what I did wrong because I have to go on again. And I it's going to be so painful, but I'm going to, I've got to do it. So I watched it and I could not believe my eyes. I thought nobody can see I'm nervous. And I get up close and I'd say, gee, can, can you tell that right there? I, I remember right there, there wasn't a thought in my mind and Skip kept talking. And I thought, thank God, because I can't think of anything to say. And then I looked and I said, but you know, nobody can see that I'm a nervous wreck. And knowing that gave me the, the, uh, will to do it again because I knew if you can't tell nobody can tell that I'm dying and I'm a nervous wreck then I can go on and then I'd tell my family that I was on and they'd all say oh you did really well I said I did yeah you did you you were really good you love what you talk about I said yeah I really love what I talk about so I guess if you love what you're talking about and you you come across as authentic right 
And I guess um, they like me because I'm still here. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> still here. And you mentioned that you don't yeah. drink. Have no. you ever drank? Not really. No. You know, maybe because when I was a young girl, 17, 16, I had, I would have maybe a drink or so, you know, when you go out, you'd have a sip and immediately I was feeling high. And if I had a little more than the high, then I'd get a headache and then I'd get tired and go to sleep. I mean, what was the point? And I didn't understand either why all the guys my age wanted to go out and get drunk. And they did, you know, they'd say, let's go to the football game and they'd bring whiskey or whatever, you know, under their coats and because it was cold in Connecticut. And, and they thought that it was cool to go out and get drunk and then throw up on the way home. And I thought, this is the most, I said, maybe I'm just, you know, I'm too mature for my age because at 17, I didn't feel like the other kids. I thought, this is dumb. I don't like drinking and getting drunk. It's not fun to be sick. It's not fun to have a headache. It's not fun not to remember. It's not fun not to have my faculties. What's fun is to feel a little high, you know, which is wonderful, but you don't need alcohol to feel high. Right. So that's why I never drank. And I used to joke about it too. And my mom once got angry at me because I asked for half a glass of champagne because I didn't want to waste it. I knew I wouldn't finish it. She said, I'll drink the rest. Don't ask for half a glass of champagne. <laughs> my mom always had a little champagne every night after or before dinner. And that was all she would have. That's all she'd have. She loved champagne. She'd have, you know, she might try something once in a while, but she loved her champagne. But she never had that addictive no, quality. No, nor did my dad. We weren't a drinking household or a smoking household. Just didn't occur to me. And it didn't bother me. I used to think, you know, um, not that I'm better than anybody else was. I didn't smoke, for instance, or drink. I thought I'm just as bad as it. I honestly thought that. I said, I'm not going to get started because it's not that I'm better. I'm just as bad as anybody else. And I, and I saw what I didn't like in friends and their parents. It was in Westport, Connecticut. It was a drinking town when I grew up with a lot of movie stars. And, you know, I saw a lot. <laughs> so I guess I was lucky, too, because my parents didn't drink. They taught us to, you know, why it wasn't a good thing. And um, I didn't have it as a, um, you know, as an example anywhere. It's amazing. I know it is amazing when I think about it. It is. If you think about it, because yeah. that's what everybody does. I know. Well, everybody, everybody thinks did. everybody does. That's right. That's right. That's more like what it is. Mm -hmm. I think we think we you drink do. because everybody else drinks. And even though it's not fun, it doesn't taste good. Right. Well, it's sort of, it, you know, I always like the ones that did like a pina colada. I love virgin pina colada today still. <laughs> you know, I like something like that or or um, when we moved to Spain, it was a Cuba Libra, which was Coke and rum. But those weren't what I call hard alcohol drinks. You know, they were, and and again, I took a sip or two and I was flying, so I didn't need any more. At least I had the good sense to stop. Because maybe somebody else would have kept, kept I don't know. I, I Maybe I was just had God on my side. I think you've you definitely know? had God on Can your I side. Tell you? So you have been on Home Shopping Network and QVC collectively for 30 plus years. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to tell everybody, but I'm going to tell them anyway. What are you going to tell? Oh my God. I'm going to tell them that <laughs> you'd never guess that Amanda is turning 80 in September. I, I, it's true. It's true. And the reason I think may, maybe, I always used to think, well, when I'm with my son on air, he's so big and tall, you know, so you always assume people are younger when they're shorter. You know, and he's so big and everything like that. So if I put sunglasses on, there was no way you could tell my age. So, <laughs> but no, I, I think um, I've always felt young. I've always felt young and, and age has never meant anything to me. I have friends your age, Elizabeth. I have friends that were older than my parents. Some of my best friends, unfortunately, she's not here anymore. My One of my really best, she she was maybe 30, 40 years older than me. And the one of the youngest people I've ever known. Honestly, the one of the youngest people I've ever known. What do you attribute it to? How do you like, how do you do your life so that you, if you want to share it with everybody that keeps you so young, what is it? I know it's your lovely husband that keeps you on your course. toes all the time. <laughs> <laughs> He's part of it. I think love, basically love and, and God, you know, I've had a family, family. I've had wonderful parents, 
I, I've had, I have great sisters and brothers and brother-in-laws and uh, children. So when you're surrounded by love, well, I mean, what more is there? I mean, what is life without love, right? So how can I not be grateful and radiant about it every minute of my life? I get up in the morning, I say, thank you, God, for all of this. And I'm so grateful. And um, I really am. I'm grateful every minute of the day. If I could have a book and say, thank you, thank you, thank you all day long, I would. And I've tried it and I've had just, you know, <laughs> they say to take a book and write what you're grateful for. And so I got a book once and I started <laughs> writing, thank you. But I noticed that I was writing thank you for the same things like, because I, I could never say thank you enough for one thing. Like I might say thank you for my son, Skip, and my daughter, Eladi, and my son, Lorenzo. Then I'd say, oh, that's not enough. Thank you for my son, Skip, my daughter, Eladi, and my son. And I, go, and, and I and it just went pages and pages. And, and I thought, this is ridiculous. We're supposed to say thank you for everything else, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, but I think gratitude, I think love, I think God in your life and, and, and believing that there's more to life than this. And um, and I also I probably um, I'm trying to think what else you know just loving what you do or if you don't love what you do make sure you put love into what you do because it's 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 a downer if you're working at something you don't love it has to be I often think of people doing things they hate and I think it must be dreadful to get up every morning do something you hate but how could you change it into doing something you love. So take maybe take something that's really irritating. Like I remember when we were renovating our home and it was crazy. There was dust and plastic everywhere and noise every day. And I decided to look at it like a flower in bloom. You know, this is a flower that's coming out from the earth and it's opening up. When I see this done, I'm going to be so happy instead of, oh, look at this mess and I can't breathe and I can't wear my clothes because they're full of dust and I can't get I can't invite anybody over. I, I loved it. And I think if you can try to turn something that might not be so good into something that is really good, because we're only on this earth for so long, as far as we know. And so let's make every minute of it worth it, right? Because otherwise we're wasting our life. Even if we're mad or angry or annoyed for one minute, that's a waste. In my in my view. And it's right. You live by this. I mean, I can try. tell you she lives I by do. this. I do. And you still have to study when you get new products that come on. Yes. Oh, well, I wasn't born no knowledgeable at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning every day. Somebody once said that only the major things in life, and I really believe that, the major things in life are to learn new things every day and do things for other people. So if there's no way that I was born knowing, and I never will be, and so naturally, if we get new products i have to study them i leave a lot to skip because he's really he goes in depth with all the research and development i really study what will it do for me what will it do for my skin what will it do for my um mood just a wonderful fragrance things like that yeah because you look amazing thank you <laughs> doesn't she look amazing look who's talking oh my gosh are you kidding? the sunshine <laughs> Miss Sunshine. Well, Miss Sunshine. you help me to have sunshine. And I think having good friendship, you talked about that. You, I just had one of our closest friends yes. on who is so insightful, so wise. And how long have you two been friends? Going on 40 years. 40 years. Mm -hmm. I know. Well, you know, that's another thing, uh, Elizabeth, to surround yourself with people who have, who are like-minded and have that positive energy. Because, you know, when you're with somebody who's a downer, you start feeling really depressed. And it's not that you can't help that person, but don't stay too long in that person's environment because it will affect you. And if you want to be able to be effective, you have to be good. You have to feel good. You know? and you have to see the good things and not just, you know, commiserate with them on all the terrible things that are happening to them. Because, yes, maybe they're they're going through a lot, but there's a lot of good that can come out of it and a lot of good we can learn from it. And if we don't, then it really is overwhelmingly depressing. So I try not to be with people. And I have been, as we all have been with people who really come into our space and depress us. You know, you've been with people like that, I'm sure, right? Oh, you can okay. feel the energy come in and, and, and put you down. And when you leave, you feel depleted when, you, when they go, rather. You feel depleted of energy and of, of positive vibrations. And that's a, not a good feeling. And you're not going to be helpful to yourself or others. 
but you trust your intuition is yes, what I'm hearing because so many people yeah. don't trust their intuition. Yeah, that's smart. That's interesting. You say that. Yes, it's true. And I'm not sure why they don't trust their intuition. Maybe they were taught that they were not, they shouldn't. Maybe they were taught they were stupid or, or maybe they had a couple of failures and therefore they thought everything's wrong about my intuition, which it's not, you know, you have to test it. We're not always right. But our intuition, I think we're given for a reason and we're given that to listen to. And I do listen to it. And I've been wrong. I've been wrong. I maybe I misinterpreted, but I didn't say, oh, well, I'm never going to listen to it again. Right. I listen to it every time. Sometimes I say, oh, that's really stupid. I, you know, that's really dumb. But sometimes I find out that dumb thing might have saved my life. And I won't go into that, which it did in other instances. Thinking something was stupid actually saved my life. So yes, listen to your intuition for sure. You do, right? Oh my gosh, I have to. Right. And right. for so long, I didn't trust it because we have this thing in our life, that, that right. thing in our head that says, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You're, stu you know, you're not smart enough or you don't have that degree that from insecurity that. Right, that exactly, have, right? Mm -hmm. exactly. And then we go off and we do something and I can feel like when I feel bad energy around me, I don't stay there anymore. I get up and I remove myself. Right. And that's huge because so many people sit in situations where they're like, I know this isn't good for me. I know I shouldn't be here, but you don't trust yourself that you can leave and that you can do life without maybe this person. Well, you don't know if it's going to be better. You think, right. I know what I have. It's horrible, but I bet it could be worse if I leave it Right. instead of trying it. And if you fall down, get up and go back or go forward, but don't stay there. Right. Right. It's really, it's really, it's that trust, Interesting. that trust. I think you have to learn to trust yourself like anything else in life. You have to learn from success and failure when you trust yourself and why, and, you know, keep, keep, you know, keep getting as far as you can get and then say, what's my gut telling me? And then see what happens, but don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to fall. But the worst that can happen is you fall and then you get up again. I'm not afraid of falling as long as I don't get hurt too much. <laughs> I don't want to get hurt too much. And what would you say the biggest gift that you gave your children? And I don't mean material. I don't mean material. I mean, spiritually or a lesson you taught them that you think was, you're so glad you taught them this. I guess to be loving and considerate. I think considerateness is really important to consider other people. So many times we're not even aware that we're hurting somebody or whatever. But And I think they really are considerate, all three of them. And I, I think just give and take. You know, you, you're not born knowing anything, really. You have to teach a child to say thank you. You have to teach a child to, uh, you know, how to give, how to be charitable, um, how to think not just of themselves, but to share all those things. I, I think I, I taught them because I was taught. So it may, maybe came naturally to me. It's amazing because you do have this relationship with them that I envy all the time. I'm you like, do. You have a great relationship. I do. I do. I do. From what I've seen. I, mean, I do. Yes. You know, we're yes. going through a little trouble patch, which that you do helps. with kids. That happens. That happens. Yeah. It, that happens that you have one that's sure. upset with you at times, right? Right. Of course. Listen, who doesn't? <laughs> We're not perfect, although we'd like to think so. <laughs> so is there anything special you do with your diet or face stuff that you put on things that keep you young? What would you say to somebody who's listening? Like, don't forget this as part don't of your life. Don't forget to put your moisture on. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about that. You know, in real estate, it was, um, what, what, what were the three things we were taught? Um, and it's terrible. Um, location, location, location. In in my business, in the cosmetic business, it's moisturizer, moisturizer, moisturizer. You know, your skin absorbs moisture and that's what keeps it young and healthy and gives it tone and balance and everything. Yes. So since I was lucky enough to get into this business, I have been using and testing the best creams in the whole world, the best moisturizers. And Perlier, you know, I can go on and look you straight in the face and say, for me, Protea is the best product I've ever used, and I've used hundreds of them. You know why? Because I can see the difference. I can put something on and actually see the difference within a, a week or two. And sometimes Skip will send me, my son will send me, talking too much, <laughs> will send me products. And 
And he'll say, try this. And I try to find a line on my face. And I said, Skip, I can't really find two lines <laughs> to try this. Line. And I feel so stupid because what am I supposed to make a line, you know, force a line? But I my, my I guess because our products have collagen in it and 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 we also, you know, it helps to create your own collagen and we have hyaluronic acid, all those things give give your skin, my skin, and anyone who's used these products for years a such a youthful uh look. And we actually can go back in time, I think, because my skin looks better now as I, at 80 than it looked at 70, honestly. You know, I might look older in other ways because I'm, I'm sure we, you know, I, I have more arthritis. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I can't move as fast as I could. But um, certainly my skin is better. Yeah, it really is. And you use your brain every day. Thank God. <laughs> right? So, I mean, you're constantly- Good point though. You have to, right? It's an organ. You have to use it. Otherwise it's going to atrophy. So I try to, as, as I said before, to keep learning new things, even if it's like, how do ants build an anthill? People who know me, uh, who get my emails, I'm across the board there. I'm all over the place. I'm, you know, with the pyramids in Egypt, I'm with the uh, flood in wherever, I'm with the going to the moon, I'm going to, I'm in politics, I'm in uh, medicine. I love it all. I love it all. Because there's so much out there that we can learn. What are we here for if we're not one of the things not to learn about what, what world we're living in? I mean, we're living in this world. So we should know what's going on, right? Definitely. <laughs> or want to know anyway. Definitely. I do. I do. I, and I'll never learn enough. And I don't understand people who say they're bored. How can you be bored? Just open your computer. Open a, uh, you know, I mean, look in Wikipedia for anything you want. I hate to even ask questions because then I get stuck reading. About, and then you read about something else. You know, there's a little blurb of something else and you go into a whole nother world and then you go to the Middle Ages. And then you you said, I just wanted to know the meaning of this word. And all of a sudden you're in the Middle Ages reading about the plague or something. It's a right. You it's crazy. Kind of no, you just go, go on. You can go on for eternity as far as learning. So I think, you know, one of the things that you might say you find youthful about me is my my um, interest and excitement about being alive and living and learning. To me, this is so thrilling. What a gift. Wow. What a gift that we're living in this country with all of these opportunities. And, and if we don't take advantage, we're just we're throwing these gifts away that we've been given. Look around the world. Don't ever complain. Just look around the world and you'll stop complaining. And you don't even sleep eight hours a night. <laughs> oh, heavens, no. No, <laughs> I sleep maybe, let's see, five hours. I don't like to sleep. I mean, not that I don't love the feeling of sleeping, but I, I feel like I'm almost wasting time. You know, time's running out for me. I mean, how many more years can I live? <laughs> I just, I want to, I hate to, you know, give up that time by going to bed. Right? I yeah. Mean, that's a short time that I have left compared to what I've had. And I didn't even appreciate what I had when I had it. Most but you don't look don't. back. But you don't look no. back, do you? No, not not with regret. No. I've always loved getting older. And people say, haven't you loved getting older? I said, I know it's so dumb when you think I'm going to die. <laughs> as I, But I love getting older because I'm learning more. And I'm more excited about life and all the wonderful things that are that are out there. And I look at most of things as being wonderful. I don't. I try not to see the dark side. Try and you have to. these grandchildren too. She has four grandchildren. Yeah, we're beautiful grandchildren. Yeah, I'm lucky. Wonderful grandchildren, and I have some grand dogs. And, <laughs> <laughs> and horses. And horses. Grand horses too. <laughs> and who knows? Who knows? I might have grandchildren I don't even know about. But um, yeah, I do. I'm lucky that way too. And my last question. Yes. So there's all this darkness in the world we all know about, right? Because we've been watching it on TV since COVID, especially. Mm. And if somebody's listening and they're in a funk, what would your advice be to get out of the funk and see the light? What would you I, say? I'm immediately thinking of Moonstruck when Cher said, snap out of it. <laughs> <laughs> right? Just snap out of it. I'm, I would say if you're in a funk, why? Why are you allowing yourself to be in a funk? You have one life and this is your life. Use it. 
do things for other people, love other people, bring love to you. You will attract what you give out. We know that. We know that. So don't waste a second of it in complaining or being morose or going down the wrong road or saying, woe is me or all that stuff. Forget it. Snap at it. <laughs> right? I love that. Right? I love that's that. when it first comes to mind. I love Cher when she said, snap out of it. Right? I have to watch that again. Oh, that's such a great movie. I One know. of my favorites. Yeah, watch <laughs> Moonstruck. <laughs> right? Exactly. Thank yeah. you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. I love you. I love you back. All right, you guys. Again, thanks again. Amanda Borghese. And if you're listening, please know you're not alone. We've all been through trials and tribulations. It's not the destination. It's the journey. Remember that. And until next week, I'll talk to you later. Be well. Take care. Love you guys. Bye.